What's up guys, it's Blaze here. Let's continue with our RPG series. And we are in not the last, last section, um, but this is the last major section of our tutorial series where we implement skills. If you haven't already seen the theory video, which was uploaded, I think it was around two weeks ago now, um, you can go back and watch that. Uh, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to get our project set up for the entire skill section. So we're not going to do a lot of code, but we are going to jump around to multiple places to put the code skeleton in. So we'll be putting in empty functions and things like that. Um, so let's start. Let's go into our helper here. And what we're going to do is, like I said, we are going to add in the code skeleton, which we will fill out um, later in this section here with just the actual name of the functions itself. All right, so you can see here that we have three new functions, which I will focus on here. And we have the unit magic function, we have single target attack, and we have multi-target attack. Now keep in mind that with the single target attack function, we need a parameter here, which is just going to be the unit that we are going to target. Multi-target does not need that. and what we're going to do is in the coming videos, we will fill these out. So don't worry if there's nothing in here yet. We're just laying the foundation. All right, now that we have our helpers in, I think the next logical step would be to add in some extra code for the button. Okay, so here we are in the button section here. If we scroll all the way down, we're going to add in two new code skeletons. One is for the skill menu and the other function is for the actual skill button itself. Okay, so for this one, what we have here is our general button, kind of like the targeting button, our standard attack in which it will change the UI layer. And then this skill button function here is the actual function that we're going to call whenever we click on the skill that we want to use. But like I said, we're just going to stick to the, um, the skeleton for now and we will fill in the blanks later. Let's now go over to the player. And in this section, what we're going to do is we are going to add a, another animation, which is our our skill animation. So instead of, I don't have a, like a casting or magic animation with this character pack. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this one here. I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to take player attack. And instead of player attack, I'm going to rename it. I'm going to rename, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, just make sure that you have an animation unlike me. I don't have an animation for you know using skills or using magic. So that's completely up to you. Um, of course, you, you don't have to have that right now, but uh, we're gonna need it for our section. So I'm going to rename mine to, I guess it just makes sense to call it skill. All right, and then, here with this, I'm going to drag the actual play, uh, the actual part of the timeline all the way to the end. Now, if you only had 200 frames, I've actually expanded mine to 300 when I was testing it out. Um, I think this is 300 might be more than enough as you can see here, but uh, I just put it there for, just for the sake of safety. But um, make sure your timeline is of course, how you want it to be. Now for our actual functions, uh, for our actual moments, we are going to go to, for my case, I'm gonna go around the middle and I'm going to add in another check for hit here. All right, because I mean, if you think about it, our check for hit is kind of our skill is kind of like our regular attack. And I just realized that I named that player attack. Is it? Okay, good. All right, so it's player skill now, good. All right, so at the end, just like the unit attack, we're going to send out two things. So if I hover over unit attack and right click, we have attack sent and unit attack. 
In the same way, if I go back to the code here in the helper, we have unit magic. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to call it magic. I'll call it skill just to keep it consistent. So a skill doesn't always have to be magic. It could be a weapon skill or it could be some sort of, it could be anything. So just keep that in mind that um, when I say skill, it's magic plus other things. It doesn't have to be for your game, but just for the sake of uh, clarity, that's what we're going to stick with. So unit skill, and we're going to do the same thing. Here, right at the end or towards the end, actually, I just want to know where that is, 63. So it's kind of like at the end here, or I might, yeah, here we go. In the last frame, I'm going to add in unit skill unit skill as a moment. And I'm also going to add a broadcast message and I'm going to call it skill sent, right? So it's going to be very similar to how the attack system works in that it creates the skill, it sends out the skill sent broadcast as well as the, um, it calls the function as well. Now I'm going to drag I'm going to drag that out a bit just so it uh, just so we can kind of see what's what. Yeah, it's really weird. Uh, I wish. Yeah, th don't try to manually drag or change your broadcast and moments because um, you could, as you just saw, it's a bit frustrating. The left clicks kind of overlap each other. So just kind of have it roughly one after the other. So it checks for hit and then it sends, it calls the unit skill. And then the last thing that happens is it sends out the broadcast. That's what I have going here. And try to follow that as closely as possible with your particular animation. Um, that rounds out the code skeleton for our functions as well as the player sequence. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to the room. And here in the room, we have our base UI, we have our sequence, we have our instances. It's great. There we go. I accidentally deleted a target UI, so. Um, glad that didn't, that wasn't permanent. Okay, let's save this out just to be safe. And let's add in a new instance layer. This instance layer will be our skills UI. So let's rename it. Uh, I'll call it skills UI. And what we're going to do with this one is we're going to put in, of course, our generic buttons. And to make things easy to see, I'll hide the base UI. And we're going to put down, because I only have two skills in my game and each character, at least the way that I planned it out, will have a maximum of four skills. We're going to put down, this is our cancel button. So we can just, we can actually fill in the details for that now. I'm going to go to variables here and I'll call this cancel. And of course the code, if I remember correctly, I don't remember correctly, actually, is the cancel button there. We want to copy that over and cancel button. And now that we have that, we can just close that off because that's finished. The next two things that we're going to add are the actual skill buttons themselves. Now I'm just going to drag these in. And for now, they'll do nothing we kind of need to fill in the rest of the code in order for these two buttons to be able to carry information. So just leave them blank for now. Okay, so I hope that you guys saved that out. We're gonna wrap up the video here because if we kind of go over time and we start writing code for other objects, it's just gonna get messy. So let's just stop here. Um, make sure that, let's recap. Make sure you have a new skills UI instance layer. You've got your three buttons. One of them is going to be cancel. You've got your new um, animation for casting your spells or using your skills. And it has three, uh, it has two moments. One moment for checking if your skill is going to hit. Another moment that has, that actually calls a function similar to attack. 
and of course a broadcast that set, that tells the system that the skill has been sent through. Next, make sure that you have your code. We have two new buttons. We've got the skill menu button and the skill button. And of course, for our helpers, we have unit skill or whatever kind of function you want to call in your sequence. And we have two types of attacks. We have a single target attack and a multi-target attack. Remember that these are all just skeletons and we will fill them in as the videos progress. So keep an eye out for those. Anyway, guys, that's all from me. We'll leave it here. In the next one, we'll start working with our manager so that we can actually start scrolling through UI layers and adding buttons to a list. A whole bunch of things are going to happen in that one. So um, each and every single one of these skill section videos are going to be important. Yeah, subscribe, turn on your notifications, questions and comments, leave them in the section below and I will get to them as soon as I can. Anyway, guys, that's all for me. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.